Mr. Conrad. Glad, Glad to see you, Mr. Boss. I'm Doctor. Forever. If you will be so kind as to speak to the pupils before the exercises begin, uh, something like... Hard work succeeding with perseverance? Exactly. I'll do my best, Mr. Bob. Thank you, Mr. Conrad. Now, uh, we have with us today a man who needs no introduction. A man whose forefathers were responsible for the founding of this community. He has kindly consented to tell us the effect of education upon his rise to success. Mr. Conrad. This is going to hurt me worse than it does you. As a youngster, I listened to long-winded speeches in this very room with the same horror that you are now hearing this. What pupil inherited my corner? I used to stand right over there. And uh, what's your name, son? Ned McCarthy, sir. That's a truthful son you have, Mrs. McCarthy. Well, Ned, just between us brother corner standers, although the rest of you may listen in, this education business has its good points and bad. I can't say that anything that I had whipped into me here ever helped me one bit. <laughs> All you can be taught in any school is how to teach yourselves. Life is a tougher schoolmaster than Principal Boggs. <laughs> Life overlooks no mistakes. Life tolerates no failures. You can't bribe life with an apple. <laughs> and my sincere apologies. That's why it is important for you to realize now that reading, writing, and arithmetic are simply three short steps to reason, recognition, and reward. Will you remember that? Yes, yes sir. sir. Now let's hear what you have to say. We'll now have a dramatic recitation, accompanied by our young musical genius, a former pupil, Miss Dorothy McCarthy. She has arranged these brilliant musical compositions, especially for this occasion. I now present Master Timothy McCarthy. Turn to your seat and see that you behave yourself. 
Wild the bird. Continue. And the children coming home from school. And the children coming home from school look in at the open door. For they love to see the flaming forge and listen to the bellows roar. Roar. Oh, I forget. <laughs> up the first Tuesday in September. Children, you are now dismissed. Quite an idea. Well, I spend most of my time here, so I just thought I'd move my things in. Oh, I see. And now you're moving them home again, is that it? Yes, sir. I have a corner there, too. I practically live in corners. Do you have to be so bad? It's not that, sir. Everything I seem to do turns out wrong. Well, I'll fix it with the schoolmaster. I have to for my own son. Oh, no, sir. Thank you just the same. But I did gum up his finger, so I ought to let him punish me. That's only fair. Don't you see, sir? Yes, son. I see. <clears throat> Aren't you ashamed of yourself, Ned? Making a spectacle of yourself the last day of school. Where did that boy get his remarkable sense of honor? His mother. She's really unusual. Vacation time means nothing to the McCarthys. Everyone helps. Charles, there's a deserving family. Oh, Doctor, have you seen Ned? In the private session. Oh, uh... Mrs. McCarthy, you remember... Oh, how do you do, Mr. Conrad? How do you do? It's nice to have you back with us again. And how is your son, Robert? Oh, Robert, fine, thank you. I have the greatest admiration for the lovely family you're raising, Mrs. McCarthy. <laughs> so have I, but then they're my children. May I? I think Dorothy has definite talent. Thank you very much. Her father was a very gifted musician. I don't want to presume, but I should like to provide your daughter with a musical education. Thank you, but you see, my children must never grow up dependent on anyone. I'm afraid I put my proposal badly, Mrs. McCarthy. I only wanted to share, not to give. Well, I, I can't give them very much, Mr. Conrad, but I can teach them to take care of themselves. Don't you see how unfair it would be to undermine them just as they are becoming strong? Well, at least promise me this. In any emergency, sickness, or trouble of any kind, will you let me know? You're very kind. Ned. How could you? I didn't do it on purpose, Ma. Don't scold him. The account's been honorably discharged. Go on. What's going on here, Griggs? It's Mr. Roberts, sir. Why isn't he in school? I don't know, sir. He arrived here unexpectedly this afternoon, sir, with, with a lady, sir. With a lady? 
Uh, look here, Charles. On second thought, I believe I'll forego that cup of tea. Some other time, perhaps. Well, if you must. Griggs, have Michael drive the Reverend Meeker home. Yes, very good, sir. Hello, Dad. Glad to see me. What are you doing here? I'm home because I've been fired from school. And I'm celebrating because I'm home. Fire. You mean you've been expelled? Given the Oriental bounce, as they say at Princeton. What was the cause this time? Oh, must we go into that now? After all, perhaps I can see the reason from here. Father, this is... I'm not interested just now. If you'll pardon us, we have something to talk about, just the two of us. My son will be glad to see you home in a few minutes. Oh, no, he won't. If you think that's the way to treat your kid just because he's got scrape... His scrapes are a matter which concern only Robert and me. Now, if you please... I know you old birds. You think you rule the world and everybody in it just because you have a little money. Well, let me tell you this. You're not throwing me out of here. Perhaps, after all, I am interested in knowing who this lady is. She's my wife. Your wife? Yes, what's the matter with that? We were married three hours ago. And what do you think you're going to do about it? I... Uh, I don't know. Ain't that a hot one about old man Conrad? Ain't had so much excitement since they blowed up the maze. <laughs> hey, Wilkie, did you hear about... I ain't aiming to hear nothing that ain't my business. What's you ordering lace on them for? Nobody ever sees them. I wish we didn't have to pinch pennies just once. I wish we were rich. What would you do if you were rich, Dorothy? Oh, I'd buy a piano, and a satin dress, and a fur coat, and an ice cream freezer. Put them all on and go swimming, hmm? You can laugh at me if you want to, but... But what? Why do we have to live this way? It's the only way we have to live, dear. No, it isn't. Mr. Conrad wanted to help us, and you wouldn't let him. But, Dorothy, don't you understand? No, that? I can't understand. I'm sick of all this. I'm sick of having to do without everything. Father always said he'd make a musician of me. It's always been my dream. Mr. Conrad wants to do the same thing, and you won't let him. We wouldn't want charity, would we, dear? Charity? He has plenty of money. If he wants to give us some, why shouldn't we take it? Bach and Beethoven didn't mind charity. Money doesn't always mean happiness. Look at Mr. Conrad and what happened to his son. It isn't money I want, Mother. The answer to my dreams. Oh! I don't care what you think. Sally's a good girl, just because she's never had a chance. Good girl that never had a chance. Did she really say that? Dear, dear, it takes me back to the days of my youth. Listen, I want to tell you something. No, no, son. Let me tell you the story. It's an old friend of mine. I'm just an orphan. I never had a chance like the other girls had. A home of my own, clothes, parties, good times. I've always had to work so hard. If I just had a little home of my own, a vine-covered cottage. Well, what if she did say that? Couldn't it be true? So she did say that, did she? Well, she has had to work hard. Slave is the usual word. Oh, go ahead and laugh. But answer me one question. Couldn't she possibly love me? Son. Anything is possible. The young lady has arrived, sir. Show her in. Let me talk to her alone for a minute. Well, don't make it any longer than that. Sally. Robert. It 
It'll be all right. I'll fix everything. Robert, darling. Pardon me, but I'm in something of a hurry. Would you please be so kind as to step in here? Now, my dear, how much? Why, Mr. Conrad, what do you mean? Don't you know what how much means? Look here, Dad, you can't. My dear girl, Robert hasn't a dime except what I give him. He's never earned a penny in his life, and probably never will. But I thought... I thought he said he was supposed to inherit... So he volunteered that information, too, did he? You're taking advantage of me. Because I've never had a home or a family. And I've had to slave all my life. And use my money to send my little brother through college. I forgot that little touch. Just because I've never had a chance, you think you can insult me. Insult you? I'm simply making you a business proposition. It's true Robert's mother did leave him $5,000, but he won't get it for almost a year. So I'm offering to discount that for cash, as we say in the bank. I'll give you $500 now and $1,000 when Robert gets an annulment of the marriage. What about it? I'll take it. And that isn't all. I shall also give you a ticket to New York, provided you take this evening's train. I'll take that, too. That's splendid. Riggs, Miss, uh, uh, Mrs. Conrad has been called suddenly to New York. I want you to have Michael drive her to the station. As the train pulls out, and not before, please hand her this money. Hurry now, because there isn't much time. Very good, sir. If you let me have your permanent address, when the annulment is granted, you'll be paid in full. You know, for a small town hick, you're pretty smart. So long, kid. Watch out for the horse cars. Forget it, Robert. I met a little redhead once. Son. That was a long, long time ago. <laughs> this town must seem sort of dull after New York City, eh, yeah. Robert? Oh, dull isn't the word for it. Well, I won't be here long. <laughs> <laughs> Neither will them pickles, I judge. <laughs> what uh, college are you aiming to honor with your presence this time, Robert? Oh, I'm through with college. Or vice versa. Hello, girls. Hello. Hello, Mr. Wilkie. Will you please send Grandmother a 10-pound sack of sugar, 20 cents worth of salt pork, a spool of black darning cotton, and a can of snuff. And charge that, please. It's charged. Not bad for a tank town. Or vice versa. Good afternoon, Mr. Wilkie. Hello. I'd like a card of black hooks and eyes. Number three, please. Mrs. Henderson's new dress must be taking more hooks and eyes now that she's getting so fat, huh? <laughs> there you are. Thank you. Sorry. Aren't you Dorothy McCarthy? Why, yes, but I'm afraid I don't... I'm know... Robert Conrad. How do you do? I'd never have known you. Well, it's been a long time since we were in eighth grade together. You've changed a great deal. <laughs> it was nice of you to drive me home. I thought it was nice, too. I hope we can see each other some more. I don't know. I... Why not take a drive with me on Sunday? Oh, I couldn't do that. I'm not a fit person to be seen with, is that it? I'm sorry.
you were gallivanting around again last night. Well, what if I were? What else is there to do in this town? For one thing, there's work. Nobody works unless he has to. Tell me one who really enjoys it. I could name a few. The children of the McCarthy family, for instance. I'm getting tired of hearing about those noble McCarthys. Yes? That fair young daughter even thinks she's too good to associate with me. So do I. Well, anything I can do for you, Charles? It's Robert. I can't make him work, so I thought maybe you could. Well, what can he do? Nothing. No, I'll take that back. He can drive fast horses, drink champagne, and get mixed up with the wrong kind of women. <laughs> I ain't got much call for that kind of talent. Well, being one of my oldest friends, I thought you might dig up a job for him. There's plenty to do around here, all right. Oh. You want a job, do you? A job is just what I don't want. But if my father thinks I ought to go to work, I guess I'll have to. You're hired. The wages are three dollars a week and keep out of the pickle barrel. Go to sleep, my baby, my baby, my baby. I know it was wrong to let him drive me home, but he still seems like such a nice boy. I know how you felt, dear. I told him I couldn't see him again. I'm glad you did. I don't want to be unfair, but all he seems to think about is having a good time. But if I saw him again, I mean, just by accident, would it be all right if I said hello? If you met him by accident, there's no harm in being neighborly. Look, Mother. Bedtime, Penny. Come on. Come on. Night, Penny. Night, Dorothy. Don't let the boogeyman. Ned. dollars and 14 cents. Well, that's a lot of money. It's not nearly enough. It wouldn't buy more than two yards of silk, maybe not even that much. How much does it take to make a dress? About four yards. Oh, why can't I have just one little thing when I want it? But I'm not through yet. Mother's going to have a silk dress for her birthday. I'm pretty sure someone would give me 15 cents not to throw rocks through their windows. Why, Ned. Dorothy, it's time you're all in bed. All right, Mother, right away. If we could only find some junk to sell. <laughs> Darn those cats. I'll fix them.
on your neck for hitting me. Come back here, you scallywags. I'll break every bone in your body. Why don't you shut up? You're making more noise than cats. The boys thought maybe they could trade this junk in on something, Mr. Wilkie. Where'd you boys get this stuff? We found it in an alley. Why, is there something wrong? No, 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 nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. Except that most of it's mine. Well, I don't understand. Well, you see, there was a couple of stray cats staging the gal Donner's fight out behind our house last night. Cats? I lost my temper and started to throw things at them. Never heard so much racket in all my life. I heard those same cats, too. Well, Mr. Wilkie, if these things are yours, oh, we couldn't very well take any money for them. Why, of course you can. I'm glad to get them back. Besides, the boys deserve something for taking all the trouble to collect this stuff. The things didn't belong to them. Why not? They was out in the public alley, wasn't they? Besides, it's my fault for being such an old fired fool and throwing the stuff away. Well, these boots alone cost me five dollars. Well, if you put it that way... Uh, how would a dollar do? That's awfully nice of you, Mr. Wilkie, but we thought we'd take it out in trade. You see, we wanted to get enough silk to make a dress for Mom's birthday. What's the cheapest you have? Oh, uh, a dollar and a half a yard. It's so awful good, though. Well, I guess that's out of the question. You see, we'd saved up two seventy-nine, but even with a dollar, that won't be enough for four yards. And maybe some gingham. Take the silk, Dorothy. You know me the difference. Oh, we couldn't do that. Mummy wouldn't like it. Besides, it wouldn't be the same if we couldn't pay for it ourselves. Why can't I have just one little thing when I want it? But I'm not through yet. Mother's going to have a silk dress for her birthday. Gee whiz! What's the matter? Look at this. Molasses ran all over this cloth. How did this happen? Don't blame me. I just noticed it. I reckon this just about solves your problem. How do you mean? Well, this silk is damaged. I couldn't sell it for new. But you could clean it off and nobody'd know the difference. You're just saying that to be nice. Why, no, I'm not, Dorothy. I'm a word of honor. I could sell it to you for, uh, let's see, uh, uh how was 250? That's more than I'd get second hand. Well, if you say so. Thanks, mister. Thanks for what? Thanks for not telling on us. Oh, that's all right. I'll even forgive you for that boot that hit me on the head. Thank you. Come on, boys, we've got to be going. Well, Dorothy, can I see you for a minute? I want to apologize. I suppose you think I was too forward asking you to take a drive with me. Oh, no, it wasn't that, only I couldn't go riding with it. Married man. Oh, yes, I've forgotten that little trifle. Little trifle? What? I, I, you, you can see by this new job I'm doing penance for it. Goodbye. What do I do now, Mr. Wilkie? Music? What music? You know, the music Dorothy had Mr. Wilkie send to Boston for. Oh, that music. No, nope. it's not here, I'm afraid. The last mail's come in, hasn't it? Yeah, I'm afraid she won't have it today. I'll come back tomorrow. Why, how do you do? Hello, Mrs. McCarthy. Uh, Dorothy's music arrived just as I was leaving the store, and I thought she might be wanting it. Oh. Well, uh, that was very nice of you. Won't you come in? Well, uh, I don't think I 
I ought to. But... Now you come in and sit down after going so far out of your way. I'll call Dorothy. Oh, Dorothy! Hello, Dorothy. <laughs> Robert came all the way down here just to bring you your music. Oh, that was nice of you. Oh, I wasn't doing anything, and I thought you might be in a rush for it. I don't know how to thank you. I'll tell you how you can. Play something for me. Oh, here you are. Well, that's an easy reward. <laughs> You'd really like to hear it. Well, Mr. Conrad, when did that music come? Oh, just about the time a couple of cats started fighting. What would you like to hear? Oh, how about this? so late. <laughs> it's nice to have music in the house again. Mr. McCarthy used to play for us every evening. Good night, Mr. Conrad. Good night. I want to thank you again for going to all this trouble. Oh, don't mention it. I've had an awfully nice time. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I have, too. Do you still think I'm such a terrible person? Why, I never thought so. I almost forgot the principal reason for coming here tonight. What's that? Well, Father wanted me to ask if you wouldn't all come to dinner with us on Sunday night. Well, that's very nice of him, but... He'd be awfully disappointed if you don't. Oh, Mother, please do. It'll be such fun. Well, thank you. We'll send the carriage for you at noon. Good night. Good night. Good night. I've always wanted to see the inside of Mr. Conrad's home. It must be beautiful. Yes, so have I. Uh, Robert seems like a nice boy, doesn't he? I think he's a very nice boy. Now, don't begin thinking he's too nice, Dorothy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dorothy's got a feller. Dorothy's got a feller. Something I learned at Princeton. The only thing, no doubt. Would you care to play a game, son? Well, yeah, sure. All right. By the way, I invited some friends here to dinner Sunday. I wish you'd tell me in advance when you intend to invite people here. Well, I didn't think you'd mind. Well, as you know, I don't care very much for your friends. Well, I think you'll like these people. Well, there's a bare possibility of that, but the point I'm making is I have invited a house guest of my own for the weekend. I don't think you'll be disappointed in my friends this time. It's the McCarthy family. The McCarthys? Isn't that all right? Why, certainly. I'm delighted. But I didn't know they were friends of yours. Oh, they're a very nice family. I just spent the evening there. As a matter of fact, it fits in very nicely. My guest is Montefiore. The pianist? Yes, an old friend of mine. Oh, swell. I think Dorothy will enjoy meeting him. Yes, won't she? Dorothy might... Look here, son. This is your own hometown. Remember that. dinner was your father's idea? Does it 
make any difference? Not to me. It was also an opportunity to meet the great Montefiore. And at that, the queen, she said to me, Signore, you are the greatest artist in the whole world. And then what did she do? Well, I don't know. What did she do? She kissed me. So. <laughs> well, wasn't she enthusiastic? But look, Luigi, your dinner's getting cold. Dinner. Always you Americans think of the food. Food. Do you never think feed your souls? Bah. Don't mind our house guest. He's a temperamental genius. And doesn't he know it? <laughs> Robert, do you suppose you could prevail upon Dorothy to play something for him? I'll try, Father. Montefiore, fuori. Beethoven, sonata appassionata. Know it? I used to play it with Daddy. Finale, last part. Dad, why wouldn't it be a good idea for Montefiore to give Dorothy a few lessons while he's here? It might be a career for her. Splendid thought, Robert. Oh, Mr. Conrad, I... But it's a great chance, Mrs. McCarthy. Senor, my father suggests that you might tutor Dorothy during your stay with us. I'll be delighted. I couldn't possibly afford it. What? You speak to me. Luigi, Cesare, Maria, Montefiore, of money. Ah, for that, I hate you. But there's the mama of genius. I salute you. <laughs> Darling, do you want to? Oh, mommy, could I? You mean I can? You must. Oh, mommy. Grazie, signor. Grazie. such incredible progress in so little time. Uh, the credit belongs to you. Niente, niente, not at all, not at all. How are the lessons coming? Oh, very nicely, thanks to Signor Montefiore. Ah, the thanks she belong to your natural talento. I don't want to hurry you, but... Uh... Ooh, do, 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 do. I had no idea it was so late. I will get my coat. Arrivederci, signorina. 
Can't we drive you home, Dorothy? Thanks, but Robert said that... He just came into the driveway as I came in. Bye, Mr. Conrad. <laughs> How's the world's greatest pianist today? And how's the world's greatest storekeeper? Oh, I'm afraid I haven't much talent as a storekeeper. I've got to be getting home. Look, it's raining. It's doing more than raining. I'm afraid we'll have to wait. I've only got the open buggy. It probably won't last long. Let's watch it, shall we? Oh. Most girls are afraid of lightning. Michael will take you home, my dear. Don't you see? Don't you understand? If you'd only realize, I really love that girl, I just... You won't understand, will you? You won't even try to understand me. I suppose you won't want me to stay here any longer. Well, you'll have your way. From your standpoint, I don't blame you. I'm moving tonight, but I want you to understand this. I'm staying in this town until I can make you believe what you won't believe now. Why do people buy Christmas presents? Well, uh, you see, Santa Claus tells people what to buy. But what if they haven't any money? Well, I wouldn't worry about that if I were you. Santa Claus takes care of everyone. Where are you going, Penny? Me and Dolly Bell have business to attend to. <laughs> All right. Dorothy, how much does Robert mean to you? Oh, Mother, I don't know. Darling, I, I want you to be happy, but, but you know as well as I that... I know everything you're going to say. You think that Robert's wild and foolish and that he's spoiled and reckless and that he's married and... Well, maybe you're right. But I don't care. I love him. 
Dorothy, what? Thank you. What are you doing down here, huh? How'd you come down here all by yourself? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Penny. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Oh. Good night. Merry Christmas. Good night. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas, Penny. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Well, what can I do for you, Penny? You see, Mr. Robert, they're buying me just everything. And I can't buy them anything. Because little girls don't have money. Well, they're not supposed to have money, darling. But I have something better. I have Dolly Bell. She's beautiful. She hardly ever cries at night. And she's the easiest child to look after. That's the way all good children should be. Dorothy says she's worth millions and millions. I know a little girl who wouldn't take millions and millions and millions for her doll. Please, Mr. Robert. Mommy needs a new purse, and Ned and Tim need sweaters, and Dorothy just must have slippers. Please, could I have them things and pay for them with, with Dolly Bell? Why, yes, Penny, of course. Oh, thank you, Mr. Robert. I'll send the things right over. Christmas packing, of course, and lots of ribbon and holly. Yes, sir. Penny, this is our rush season. I don't think I'll have time to give Dolly Bell the proper care. Mr. Robert, I can't take anything without trading something. Why don't you just let me trust you for her? If you won't take Dolly Bell, I can't take anything at all. All right, it's a deal. See? You better order all you want, because I've got a great bargain. May I say goodbye to her? You be a good little girl, Dolly Bell. And don't ever do anything to make Mother feel sorry. Say your prayers every night and remember mother will always love you and never forget you as long as she lives do be good to her please oh look at all these lovely presents for dolly bell such a pretty dress, and a trunk to keep her clothes in, and a coat, and a bonnet to match it, and a new bed. Why don't you find Dolly Bell and see how she likes them? Yes. You've never even opened my presents. Your presents? To Mommy would love from Penny. To Ned. Ned. Oh, boy. And Tim. And Dorothy. Oh, boy. Oh, God. Gee. Why, Penny. Where did you get these gifts? Well, everybody else was giving things, and I didn't have a single thing to give anyone. I know, dear, but... Who gave them to you? Nobody. I bought them myself. But how did you pay for them? I sold Dolly Bell to Mr. Robert. Oh. <laughs> oh, Penny, you shouldn't have done that. Please don't scold me. She was all I had. <laughs> this was on the doorstep. It's marked for Penny. <laughs> Penny. <laughs> Dear Penny. This brat of yours cried all night and sassed me something awful. Maybe you can handle her, but I don't want anything more to do with a child who won't wash her ears. Yours respectfully, Robert Conrad.
Why, it's Dolly Bell. Why, Dolly Bell, how could you? You've been a very, very naughty girl. A terribly naughty girl. But Mother loves you just the same. <laughs> How is she now? Pretty low, poor child. Running through the cold in her thin dress. Nobody knew about it to stop her. Nature never takes ignorance as an excuse. Cheers, darling. How's she coming with her music? I mean, I see real talent. She's talented, unusually, close to genius. I want to do something for her, help her some way. Mm, Dorothea is a very proud girl, and she comes from a very proud family. Look here, Signor Montefiore. Suppose we arrange a concert, invite the music critics of Boston to attend. You come out of retirement this one time. Eh? Well, that'll be the attraction. Then you present Dorothy as your protege. See? See, yes, that that might bring out the critics. Oh, but you you would want the March money. And you would have to have a big symphony orchestra to complete the program. Well, I can supply the money. From what you make driving these delivery wagons? No, from my mother's estate. She left me five thousand dollars. It's coming to me soon on my next birthday. Very good, my boy. If you are foolish enough to spend all your money on the girl you love, well, I'll be foolish enough to help you. Oh, that's swell, sir. I can't practice anymore. I'm so tired. But you must. Look. The greatest music critics in America are coming for miles to hear you. Oh, I know, but... If you would be an artist, you must work. Always to work. Now, once more. You didn't 
tell her about me. Not a word. She has no idea how much the concert will really cost. Oh, that's great. It is a splendid thing you do, my boy. Pardon me. What are you doing here? I'm here on business, and we might as well get to it. This is Mr. Mack, my lawyer. How do you do? But you weren't supposed to come back here. I'll talk business for the little lady. I don't know of any business to talk about. Oh, don't you? But you're married to her, and you haven't been supporting her. Well, she didn't live up to her agreement. We tried to locate her, but couldn't find her. What do you want now? We happen to know that you've a large sum of money come to you next week. And we believe she's entitled to it. Entitled to it? That's very funny. Funny? <laughs> you won't think so. Not when you see the great Conrad family dragged through the divorce court. You won't get a penny of it. You can sue for divorce or anything else you want. You'll be sorry for this, you young hick. So, you think the concert is the more important, eh? I don't care what those two do. I wonder why the old boy picked this forsaken spot to come out of his retirement. Maybe he thought a jaunt into the sticks would be good for us critics. He can pack Carnegie Hall any night or the Hippodrome any morning. Oh, here comes the noblest Roman of us all, Venable. Good evening, gentlemen. Or am I mistaken? Not from your point of view. Come in, come in. Hiya, Robert. I got your message. Would you sit down? I'm in sort of a hurry. So are we. Here's the proposition, kid. We're willing to be reasonable if you are. You came into some money the other day. Now, if you'll give us half of it, we'll forget all about the divorce mess. I haven't got it. Don't try to pull that one on me. You got $5,000 not two weeks ago. Yes, well, I haven't got it now. You mean to say you spent all that money in two weeks? Well, not exactly spent it. What did you do with it? I know what we'll do. We'll go over and see your old man. Oh, no, you can't. That wouldn't do any good. Oh, won't it? You'll know what became of that money. I told you it's gone. Oh, so you don't want us to talk to your father, huh? Well, we will, if you don't tell us what happened to it. Is that a promise? On the level. Well, I used it to finance a concert. You mean this thing at the town hall? Do you mean to say you spent every cent of that money to hire a hall for a bunch of musicians? That's it. We'll see about that. Come on, Mac. We're going over to that theater right now and have a showdown with Conrad. You're not going over there. Oh, yes, we are.
first star, I think. Lovely of you. Oh, don't, don't, don't thank me. Robert Conrad is paying for all this? Yes. Uh, now, you, now, now you, you just wait here a few moments and uh, Mr. Conrad will see you. If I may be done. Tonight, I wish to introduce my protege, Miss Dorothy McCarthy. satisfaction about this. But I know nothing about these things. Perhaps I'd better... to get my rights. You're right. Yes, we found out that your son spent all his money on this crazy concert. Half of it belongs to his wife. And who are you? I'm this lady's lawyer. That girl has talent. But something's happened to her tonight. I can't sit here and watch her suffer. Did Robert... Uh... <laughs> yes, it is true. I promise not to tell you, but... I don't believe you're entitled to a cent. However, if you let my son alone... He's still my husband. He won't be for long, but in the meanwhile... Don't give that pair any more money, Father. Playing the small towns now, are you? What is all this? There are a couple of crooks. This officer just followed them here. And I'm going to put them out of circulation. Oh, Ned, please. You'll be sorry for this, you young hick. You mean to say that man is not a lawyer? Lawyer? Huh. He's a crook. And so is his wife. Come on. His wife? Then you were never married to her? Well, gee, that means I'm free. Then you're free. I'm sorry you found out. You did all this for me, and I ruined it. But, my dear, it was not your fault. You were upset before you had started. But we try again. Darling, never mind. Oh, Mother. Yes, Mother. I hear the way she sing to Baby Penny. And it reminds me of all the songs of all the mothers. I do not play with the fingers. I play with the heart. And what do I do? Why, my dear, 
You have not yet developed a soul. You have had no experience. That's very funny. So I've had no experience. And what do you suppose I've been going through the past few months, playing the piano for a slave driver? And the boy I love driven away from me by his father? And my concert spoiled by your wife? Well, she's not my wife. She's a bigamist. A bigamist? I don't care. She's a Siamese twin. She spoiled my... Don't you laugh at me, Robert Conrad. I can't stand to be laughed at. My whole life is ruined. My career is wrecked. I can't face my friends anymore, and it's your fault. Are you hurt, darling? Ha, 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 ha